Hello, my name is Alex Tung. I am an applications engineer here at Sensoron. Uh, in this video, I will be demonstrating the fusion splicing procedure for fusing two pieces of fiber together, and it is also the procedure for creating a fiber sensor for strain or temperature sensing. Here we have all of the tools, components, and materials needed to fuse two single mode uh, fiber optic cables together or to create a strain or temperature sensor for use with the sensor on sensing devices. Uh, so starting over here, we have a single mode fusion splicer. Uh, this is the device which will actually take the two fibers, uh, bring them together, align them, and then fuse them together. Uh, we have the necessary power for this device. We have some cleaning materials, so some lint-free wipes and some isopropyl alcohol. We also have a fiber cleaver, which will give us a nice 90 degree flat clean cut on each of the fiber faces that we're trying to fuse together. We have some fiber strippers, which will allow us to strip the jacket, the buffer material, and the coating off of any single mode fiber optic cable. We have some Kevlar scissors to cut away some of the internal materials found in some of these FCAPC patch cords. We have two sets of what are called fiber holders. Uh, these holders will go inside the device and they will actually hold the fibers on the left and right side. Uh, and there's two sets uh, because there's different diameters of different fibers that you might want to bring together. Uh, you're going to use the ones labeled 250 if you're bringing together two bare fibers. Or if one is bare, you'll use, you'll use one 250 on one side. And then we have these 900s if you have a buffered fiber such as is found in the FCAPC patch cords. For making a fiber sensor, uh, we also have these other materials here. Uh, this is a uh, fusion protection sleeve. It is a double layered heat shrink wrap with a steel bar reinforcement inside of it. Uh, so once we complete the fusion splice, we will slide this over that splice point, which is kind of a weak point in the fiber, and we'll shrink that down to protect it. We have a heat shrink, which we'll we use to bridge the gap between this FCAPC patch cord uh, jacket material and this uh, splice protector, just for a little bit of strain relief. And then, of course, we have our bare sensor fiber. The first step of the procedure to perform a fusion splice is to prepare both the left and the right fibers. For this particular demonstration, we're going to be splicing a bare fiber optic cable to the same type of fiber which is contained within the FCAPC patch cord. So this is mimicking the procedure uh, which you would do to create a strain or temperature sensor. You want to have a connector on one side leading to your sensor fiber on the other side. So I'm going to begin with the bare fiber side. Uh, so all bare fiber, all, almost all fiber optic cable in general, has a small amount of coating uh, which protects it in bending, otherwise this would break very very easily. And so for the fusion splicing procedure, uh, we need to remove this coating. Uh, so that coating is removed by using the jacket and buffer and coating strippers. Uh, so there's three different sizes. For the coating, we will be using the smallest size. So for the amount to take off, uh, it varies a little bit depending on the uh, splicer and the cleaver, but in general, at least about an inch and a half. You cannot do too much. You can always cut off plenty uh, or more than you need to cut off. Uh, but you can do too, too little, so about an inch and a half to two inches uh, should suffice for most fusion splicers. So I'm going to insert it into the smallest hole here, squeeze down on the strippers, just like doing an electrical wire, and then pull it through. So you can see I've taken away a lot of the coating. Uh, there usually is a little bit left behind like this, which is fine. Uh, we will completely remove that once we use a lint-free wipe uh, and some isopropyl alcohol. So that's the next step. I have here an unused lint-free wipe. I'm just going to put just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on it. And then being careful not to snap the fiber because now this is exposed glass. Uh, it is rather fragile. I'm just going to kind of wrap it in this and then pull it straight back and it should remove the rest of that material. So just a few simple swipes. I'm not squeezing too hard. And there we go. So now we have a clean portion of stripped fiber here at the end. Uh, the next step is to place this part of the fiber into one of our fiber holders and then give it a nice cleave. So for that process, I'm going to select uh, this fiber holder labeled 250R. 
Uh, the 250 represents 250 microns. That refers to the diameter of the fiber we're placing in here. So 250 microns is the diameter of bare fiber in most cases. And then the R stands for right. So this one will be placed in the right side of the fusion splicer. So this little lid here is held magnetically. So you can open that up. Uh, you can see a very small groove in here. You want to place the fiber into that groove and then close the lid, ensuring that the fiber stays straight. Uh, through the egress point here. So I'm going to close that down and it's ready to go in the cleaver. You open up the cleaver top and you can see this slot right here. This is where we will place the fiber holder. And there's a little magnet that holds it in place. You can see it locks into place there. And the stripped portion of fiber is spanning these two rubber pads right here with the blade in the center. You want to make sure that you have stripped enough material off such that this entire spanned section is bare, exposed glass fiber. What this cleaver does is we will close this lid and push this little lever down and it will swipe this blade across the fiber, causing it to fracture with a nice 90 degree flat face. So I will close that down, depress the lid, press the button, and now we have a nice cleaved fiber. I'm going to set this one aside. So that completes the right side of this splice, and now we're going to prepare the left side. Uh, so for this particular example, we are going to be splicing to the fiber within an FC APC patch cord. Uh, this is typically done for sensor on sensing applications uh, because we like to have a lead, uh, a lead in cable which is kind of protected and lets technicians maneuver and work around the area. Uh, if you have space constraints, you could also just use bare exposed fiber uh, as the lead cable, but of course it is a little bit more fragile. Uh, in that case, you would just repeat the same procedure for the left side and continue on uh, with two bare fibers. For the FC APC patch cord, uh, we need to remove uh, a few different layers of material. This outer layer is just a plastic jacket. And so I'm going to remove anywhere between four to five, even up to six inches of this using the largest outermost uh, section on the stripper. So I'm going to squeeze down and pull and then it will snap and then you can just remove the rest. So this then reveals the next two layers. Uh, there's kind of this Kevlar strand reinforcement. Uh, so we're going to use some Kevlar scissors to cut that away so it does not get in the way. So we have Kevlar scissors for that purpose. Place that aside. So now that the Kevlar is removed, uh, we've exposed the section of fiber which just has this 900 micron diameter buffer material on it. Uh, so to remove that, we're going to go back to the strippers and we're going to use this middle section to remove the buffer. It is recommended for removing the buffer to do it in about centimeter long segments because the friction inside as you're trying to remove what you've uh, stripped can actually grab onto the coating and remove extra material that you may not want removed. So we're going to do it in about centimeter long segments. And one more. So now we've exposed the coated fiber, and as you can see, I've even removed a little bit of the coating. Um, so I'm just going to finish removing that coating with the coating removal part of the strippers. And sometimes it takes more than one pass. There we go. Just like the previous fiber, the next step is to clean. So I'm going to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a lint-free wipe. And then again, we use our fiber holders. However, in this case, because we're going to be holding on to this part of the fiber, which is 900 microns, we are using the 900L fiber holders. And from here on out, it is the same procedure as previously performed. Now we're ready to move on to the fusion splicer. 
So before moving to this next step, I have actually taken about a five inch long piece of heat shrink material and placed it around the FC APC patch cord. Uh, this will again serve as the strain relief between this jacket material on the patch cord to the fusion protection sleeve which will sit spanning this splice location. On the bare fiber side or the sensor side, I have also placed this fusion protection sleeve. So now on the splicer, you can open up this front panel and what you see is two sections uh, kind of mirrored on both sides where we will end up placing uh, both of the fiber holders on the left and the right. Uh, there's this little pin which will help you align them uh, and that will correspond to these uh, through holes on each of the fiber holders and then it will magnetically hold each of those in place. In the center, you can see these two electrodes pointing at each other. Uh, so what this device will do is we will place everything in, in here. We will make sure the fibers are not spanning or crossing those two electrodes. They need to stay on their own sides when they're first placed. We will close this lid. The splicer will bring them together, automatically align them, and it will use these two electrodes to actually fuse the two fibers together. So we will start with the left one. I'm going to take the holder and insert that pin on the left side into the hole on the fiber holder. And we will do the same thing on the right side. So now these are in place. I have checked that the terminations of each of the fibers, both on the left and the right side, are not crossing that point at which the electrodes are pointing at each other. If they are crossing, you can just undo one of these magnetic flaps, pull the fiber back a little bit, and then reclose the flap. But in this configuration, we are ready to begin. So now we will carefully close the lid. The machine will bring the two fibers together, and then you can see them on the screen here. So at this point, I will do a quick check to make sure that both of the sides have a nice flat cleave. Uh, the, the splicer will catch it if you try to splice it, but if you do see that there's not a nice cut uh, on either side, you need to remove the fiber and, and perform the previous step and give a nice, uh, nice 90 degree cleave on each side. Uh, both, of these, both of these look pretty good, so I'm going to hit the play button. Uh, what the splicer will do is it will do a very quick uh, flash of the electrodes. It will clean uh, both sides of the fiber, it will further align them, and then it will fuse them. So there's the clean, there's the alignment, and there's the fusion. Most splicers will display an estimated loss across this splice. Anywhere from 0.02 to about 0.05 dB is very much acceptable. So at this point, we need to protect the splice. So even though it has been fused together, it still is a weak point in the fiber. And if you do not do something to mechanically protect it, it is very highly likely that it will break. So we will reopen the flap. I'm going to hold one fiber still so it does not pop out of the holder and release the magnetic flap, and then let go. I'm going to release the other magnetic flap, being careful to hold the other fiber down because the weight of the patch cord on the other side will actually pull everything over to that side. So I'm going to carefully lift it up. Uh, the fusion uh, is actually pretty strong in tension, so it's just important to keep this nice and straight. You can even tug on it a little bit just to keep it straight. It is most weak in bending, so you do not want to let this bend. So while keeping it relatively straight, I'm going to take the splice protection sleeve and then slide it over. And so I want this to perfectly span that splice and I want the left side to actually grab onto that buffer material. You want to make sure you do not go too far left and expose the bare fiber on the right side. So I'm going to go back a little bit, put the splice right in the middle, and now it's ready to be heated. So most splices will have this additional flap in the back and this is a built-in little oven in which you can just insert this down and the heat shrink process will begin. The fusion protection sleeve has now been heat shrunk onto the, onto the splice. We're going to remove that. Kind of takes a little bit of a tug and there it comes. The final step 
is to slide the heat shrink over and we want to bridge the gap between the fusion protection sleeve and the jacket. So we're going to bring the heat shrink over, slide it onto the fusion protection sleeve, and then now we're going to heat the heat shrink. At this point, uh, the sensor has been created and it's ready for installation. Uh, an alternative to using this oven here on the back for the heat shrink here is just to use a heat gun.